Father God, we give this time to you, Lord, and we pray that you would extend our view of things, that you would extend our view of you, that you would extend our view of ourselves and of our world. Lord, as we go into this time where we're learning more about you, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us. Your Holy Spirit that dwells in us and lives beside us would begin to speak to us, showing us, showing us who you are, revealing it to us. Lord, I pray that all across this place this morning, there would be revelation knowledge that would spark, that would begin to spark in people's minds. And we as a church would forge forward in your kingdom. In your precious name we pray. You can have a seat. I want you to welcome someone you didn't come to church with. Okay. Trev, come back up here. Trouble now. <laughs> Man is brave enough to come up and shake my hand. You've got to give me a hug, right? <laughs> On your mind. Just give it to you. He is my brother. brother. A few things on the church news before we come to the Word of God. And Honor's going to come up and give us an announcement about Kids Church starting next week, which she is running and leading, and we are going to champion it with her, right? <laughs> yep. So before she comes up, I want you guys to be thinking about a verse. Let the Lord give one to you, because when she comes up here... We're going to ask her to put all those verses together again. Is that all right, Honor? You're going to give us a word this morning. I hope, I believe, I trust. So, Church News, welcome to the Australia Day weekend. And uh, trust you've all had a, a good long weekend. There's plenty of us that are traveling as well throughout this time. So be praying for those as they come back. And school starts back this week. Uh, Playtime starts back the week after. So not this week, but the week after. And Miriam and Anna are going to be heading that up. And maybe next Sunday, Miriam, if you're here, we can get you up and praying for you guys as we commission you into the year that is ahead. Coming up in February, we have Saturday the 10th of February. That's our first extra service of the year. Uh, and I just want to encourage you to be here and be a part of that. Um, it's going to be exciting. More art to come, uh, more stuff to happen, more prophecies to be heard and spoken from you. It's time for all of us to engage in that place of being prophetic. Uh, so mentor groups are starting in February, and I think I've still got one spot left on a Wednesday night. It's a group that Lisa and Rochelle are running. Other than that, we are book solid, and if you'd like to put your name down for term two, you can do that with Ida as well. Uh, just a bit of forward notice. On March 11, that's the second Saturday in March, we're running a Creating Safe Places workshop. Now, all of our church leaders are going to be a part of that, and people who are involved with Kids Church or Playtime are all going to be a part of that, but anyone can come and be a part of that as well. And I just want to encourage you to do so as we move further and further into church life, uh, and particularly in the world, it's very important that we understand some of the challenges that are operating around not-for-profits and churches and religious organisations, and understand what it is to create a safe place for children and for others as well. So that's March 11. Um, Ida will probably put out an email or something for that shortly, so I would love for anyone to be a part of that. It's March 11, 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock. It's compulsory if you're working with children. Honor, where are you? Come on down. Okay, so let's hear some verses. Who's got a verse that the Lord has laid on their heart? What was that? No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Teach me your ways and show me your paths. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That my joy might be complete in you. You're going to have to say well, way louder than that. You created me a clean heart and, and renew my spirit within me. Awesome. One more. Yep. Fear no evil for those who walk through the shadow of death. There was one other one. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Is that enough? Um, so the goodness of a renewal um, through the joy that God brings our church and that we can step forward this year because there is no fear, no condemnation and that everything we're doing is in his light and his goodness. So my actual announcement. So to all the kids here, church, kids' church, that's next week. So bring your Bible also to the church. We're looking for volunteers this year, so Trish and myself can be in church like every second week or so. Um, it's already planned, so you just got to come and lead. And so if you are interested in that, maybe pray about it and come see Trish or myself. Thank you, Anna. Shall we pray for Anna before she goes? Yep. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that word with us too. Trish is coming down. For us, this is a, we believe in, in honour. She has a, a brilliant heart. Uh, she has a heart that just loves to hear God speak. And I am so excited for what God is going to be speaking through you uh, into our children. And I just want to encourage you again, as we've done a number of times throughout last year, to think about ministering to our children. Uh, that will grow this year. As our hearts grow, they will grow as well, both in number and also in stature in the kingdom of God. And you'll find that the things that flow out of the hearts of our children uh, will be such revelation, will be such power, if we're willing to hear and to listen. And one of the reasons why I love having Anna speak into us like she's just done is that she's not even yet 18, right? But she's got such a heart to hear God speak. She doesn't have 40-something years under her belt and all the disappointments and all that sort of stuff that goes on inside her life. She still has a bunch of stuff she's gone through, but she's so pure with her heart for Jesus. And I just know that the things that flow through her are going to impact our children. Uh, she is going to leak what she carries. So if you want to pray with me for honour and for this kids' church ministry, I want you to stand up. Just raise your hand toward honour. Father in heaven, I want to say thank you with all my heart for what is about to be 2018 and for honour to step into this role uh, with Trish and there's going to be a team that you're going to raise up. I believe it and I know it and I just ask, Father, that you'll be stirring hearts right now for boldness to step into places where people have never stepped before and to say, yeah, I can, I can be a part of this and I want to partner with you in this. And so, Father, I want to pray that this year that we will see our children be sown into so powerfully. Uh, transformation from such a young age, Lord, will become so normal. The joy of the Lord will be strengthened and we'll see it and the kids of our church will leak everything that they carry. And Lord, that we too will just step into that same blessing. And so, Lord, I thank you for the kids that will be part of our kids' ministry for the year that is to be, for families that are yet to join our church. But Lord, there is just such a sense of expectancy and hope. So, Lord Jesus, would you just come to the front of this platform and place your hands on honour? Declare over her the power of the kingdom, your authority. Je Jesus, would you now commission her to go and do all the things that you've called her to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Anna. Rochelle is going to come up and give us the word of God. So if you've got your Bibles, I want you to open up to John chapter 14. And we're looking from verse 23 through to verse 27. Thank you, Rochelle. John 14, 23 to 27. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. 
But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Kind of ties in with what Anna said. Okay, a good, good friend of mine sitting up the back there in Kirsty. Kirsty, can you come down the front? Kirsty's all the way from New Hope Church. Kirsty did a mentoring group with me at the end of last year. And Kirsty, I just want you to give a testimony. Is that all right? <laughs> it's too late now, Matt. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, so thank you for, to all of you for releasing Matt to teach and bless um, the rest of Sydney by um, teaching us um, how to move more in the prophetic and how to hear from God. So I just want to honour you all for releasing Matt to do that, so thank you. Um, wow, I don't even know where to start with all the things that God's taught me over the last um, term of last year. Um, so this is what I look like in every week of our session I would cry (laughs) Um, so yeah God was just really um, kind and generous and loving in uh, who he placed in the group um, and who Matt chose to come into the group with me Um, I was really blessed by the amazing women that joined um, Matt in learning from God about who God is and who God wants us to be. So it was really awesome to be able to be in that group. Um, And, yeah, I would just encourage anybody here who hasn't um, sat under Matt's teaching and sat, uh, sat under God to learn more about God and what he his heart for you is and his desire for you to uh, be even more of the creation that he created you to be, Um, to go into, take that one last place on Wednesday night if you can, Um, otherwise I will take it for you. Um, Yeah, and just be encouraged to um, seek God more and to uh, listen to God's heart for you and to... Um, yeah, be inspired to go out into the world to be more of who you were created to be. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Kirsty's group uh, started a WhatsApp gr- uh, communication group within one week of us starting that. And there is barely a week that goes past where messages are not passed back and forth through that, where prayers are prayed, requests are made, visions are seen. And it's just the most incredible little WhatsApp group that, that seems to be happening. And uh, God continues to speak in and through you, you Kirsty. And I just want to thank God that you were a part of that group. Uh, as we're about to start, next week we start. Uh, we're dealing with nearly 19 churches, representative of 19 churches in our next ser- series of groups. Which again for me is such an encouragement to hear of what God is speaking across a city. And just again, get involved. This morning, though, we're doing a, a message, our third one, my third one for the month on the, on this, the uh, theme of restoration. Is anyone in the room in the mood for a bit of restoration this morning? Yeah, yeah? A bit, a bit of restoration? If that is you, I'm going to pray right now. I just want you to just open your heart to, to the Father and say, what if there, whatever you want to say to me this morning, whether that be an encouragement or a challenge, I want to be open to that. Again, when God speaks, I always look for him to speak an encouragement and a challenge. And you hear that through scripture all the time. It's the encouragement that we are affirmed. It's the challenge that we grow. And so today it might be a time where you're bold enough and and reach out into that scary place where honor says there is no fear actually and say, Lord, challenge me today to grow, grow me deeper. So let's just pray together. Father in heaven, I want to say thank you for testimonies like Kirsty. I thank you, Father, for her and her family and Jesus this morning. I just want to pray that the Spirit of the Lord will just descend upon them. Such power, such love, such unity, such joy. 
that the joy of the Lord will overflow from your home today, Kirsty. That will flow out of you into your children, into your husband. It will flow down your neighbourhood. That the Spirit of the Lord will be imp- impacting people even right now. So when you go back to your home, the joy of the Lord will meet you. And so, Father, this morning for each person in the room who's ready and willing for a little bit more restoration, uh, Father, I just know that the angels in heaven are readying their voice to celebrate. Is that all it takes is for one person to ask another person uh, for a glass of water and it's not forgotten. And one sinner turns from their sin and all of heaven erupts. Lord Jesus, today... We know that heaven's about to erupt. And so we say thank you, Lord, for what is about to be. And so, Lord, now speak into our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Third message on restoration. Three weeks ago, I spoke to you from Ezekiel 47, uh, which is the river of life. And the Bible speaks of Ezekiel being led by the angel of the Lord. And the angel came to him and said, Ezekiel, I want to go show you something. If an angel ever asks you to come and see something, be bold enough to say yes. Amen. I was waiting for it. The angel of the Lord showed him a a river and it started ankle deep, got to knee deep, got to waist deep, got to chest deep and he got neck deep in it. Has anyone ever felt that they've been neck deep in the spirit of the Lord? It's such a cool place to be. It's that place where you're starting to feel a little bit out of your depth but you know that God has got you. Here is Ezekiel and he is neck deep in the spirit of the Lord and it's only then that the angel tells him why he is there. If you are willing to be led by the Lord, he will take you to places before he explains why you are there. Is that true? Often we find ourselves in places that we don't expect to find ourselves but the Lord has us there and might sometimes we're neck deep in it. May it be the river of life that we're neck deep in. Last week I spoke to you about the famous Coca-Cola yo-yo and the Coca-Cola yo-yo of 1979 was one of the things that everyone had to have and they were the yo-yos that actually went up and down. You know, like the ones that just went down and stayed down and nothing happened. You didn't want those yo-yos, they were frustrating. But the Coca-Cola one would go up and down. But I spoke about the Christian life and sometimes we don't like the down. We only like the up. But if you've got a yo-yo that's fully up, it's not working. The whole concept of the yo-yo, when it goes down, great things happen when they're down. But we go, God, we don't want the down. But God says something like this to us in Scripture. When you are at your weakest, that is when I am up my strongest. If you haven't looked for God when you are down, you are missing his strength. That is where you find him strongest. That is my testimony. Today I want to talk to you about home. About being at home. See, here in this passage, this cracking verse that I use all the time, whether you're being with me in ministry or mentoring groups, you'll hear me say this a lot. All who love me, that being Jesus, will do what I say, and the Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each one of them. That is the most cracking promise in Scripture, that the Father and the Son decide to build a house within me. And I get people to imagine what that house looks like. If you could think right now, just in your imagination, what is it that a house looked like that the Father and the Son might build inside of you, I can guarantee you this, it's not an outhouse. Amen? Amen. When we're, when we're driving, doing road trips and stuff like that, and we, we've got to find a toilet stop, if it's a long drop, we don't stop. The Lord would never, I think, build a house that looks like a long drop inside of your heart. So the Father and the Son are building a home within you, so I want you to think about home today. Now, now home may, it may not present a, a safe place to you, it might present a difficult place to you, but that's not God's place for you. Home, for me, is a very intentional statement. So this past week, after I left you guys last Sunday, I got in a car with Zach and drove to Dubbo. Now, Dubbo is where my brother lives. And uh, it, the Saturday, Sunday, it was 40 degrees. The Monday, it was 41 degrees. And we came home on a very cool day of 38 degrees from Dubbo. I don't go to Dubbo for the weather. 
I go to Dubbo for the home. I'm very intentional about it. I make steps to do it. There is a lot of reasons why I don't want to do it and they're all weather based. They're all distance based. They are not heart based. So I will drive the six hours. I will f endure the heat so that I can be at home. I came home on Tuesday morning and then on Thursday morning I got in a plane to go to Melbourne to see my daughter. My daughter lives in a place called Docklands in Melbourne. Uh, if you don't know it, if you've ever seen Eddie Head Stadium on, um, on TV, she lives within sight of it. And um, we got to spend two days with her and her partner, Simone. And uh, right there, we have this opportunity and this moment again to do home. And so we got to Melbourne, it was 30 degrees. It was, supposed to, no, it was actually supposed to be 35 degrees. And we got there, and it was a really nice 27 degrees, but it got hotter and hotter. Again, if I looked at the weather, if I looked at how much it cost me to go to Melbourne and do all the things that we did, there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't do it. But there is one reason why I do, it's because I love my daughter. When God decides to do home with you, there's a lot of reasons why he might not do it. And you could probably think of many of them, but he doesn't listen to any of them. Because he looks at one, he loves you. He loves you. His desire in sending Christ to you was that you would be restored into relationship with him. And that restoration looks like home the way that it's meant to look. So after all the travel I have done over this last week, yeah, I'm tired, and yeah, it's been hot, and yeah, it's been sweaty, and yeah, I've spent a whole bunch of money, but what I've got right now is a whole bunch of memories where I have intentionally sown home into the hearts and the lives of my brother, my sister-in-law, my niece, my nephew, my daughter, my daughter's partner, my wife, Trish, and Zach himself. And while we are there, we are communicating with my son, Jake, who is actually in Canada right now, and right now our home stretches the globe, but you know what? Our heart looks like something beautiful. Why? Because we do it for love. God has given me that model. And it's highly intentional. It's highly intentional on my part. Yeah, there are sacrifices you have to make and you do make. And you get to that place where you can talk yourself out of the blessing of actually doing that. Or you can hear what your heart is saying and follow what you believe the Lord has got for you. So here in this passage, we have this concept where the father and son are building their home or their house within you. And if you think about what the father and son would use as building tools or building supplies, you're not just thinking of an old piece of plywood, are you? An old fence paling? Dirt floor? When the Lord builds, he uses things of the kingdom to build by. If you have anything to go by, you go by heaven where the, the road is gold bricks. And if the road is gold bricks, can you imagine what the houses are like? Restoration, the way that the Bible speaks it out here in these few verses of John chapter 14 are all about home. In that place, the Bible says his words are spoken, so you get to hear the words of God. Uh, his spirit is given, so he shares his Holy Spirit with us. Uh, that same spirit leads us and guides us into things of the, of, of, of the Father and the Son. And finally, he promises to give us peace of heart and peace of mind. Who's up for that? These are what we call gifts. They are not earned. They are gifts. They are just given to you. When I was young on Christmas Day, like I was one of six, right? So we had a lot of presents around a Christmas tree. My parents weren't very wealthy, so there were a lot of gifts that, you know, you had one thing that was probably of value, but you had a whole bunch of stuff that was just like, you know, it was nice. It was nice. I remember one time my, my nan put a, a, a crocheted uh, coat hanger under the tree for me. <laughs> At the age of eight, you don't really appreciate a crocheted coat hanger. Uh, she, she put some chocolate-covered peanuts, I'm allergic to peanuts, uh, under the... <laughs> I think my mum enjoyed those. 
But that's the sort of stuff, right? But here's the thing, when you're one of six kids and there's so many presents, you're really hoping that somebody forgets something and there's still another present for you. And so all of us, all six of us, will be looking under the tree for the last or the lost or that one present with your name on it. And you can hear the expectancy inside of my heart because you, when you, and if you discovered that one present with your name on it, there was such joy in the discovery. Is that right? If I had a sat back and said, no, I'm actually not going to look for a present because I just don't want to be disappointed. Here's the thing. If you don't look for something that God's promised you because you fear being disappointed, you're already disappointed. That's already where you are. You're there. So don't fear being disappointed. You just are disappointed. It takes one step of faith to walk away from disappointment. Back in the Old Testament, there's a story of, of a guy by the name of Naaman. He had a thing called leprosy, and we don't see a whole bunch of that these days, um, but leprosy is like a skin condition where if it wasn't treated back then, your, your arms and limbs would fall off. If you've ever seen Life of Brian, you'll see a very humorous way of, of dealing with leprosy in the first century and all that sort of stuff. But um, the concept with Naaman, he was this great... Uh, great uh, general of the armies of Aram. He won and defeated and had so much of everything, but the thing that he couldn't have is the thing that he couldn't buy, and that is healing for himself. And he heard it said that Elisha, all the way over there in Israel, could actually heal him. And so he got all of his collection together, all his people together, and says, we're going over to find this man of God. And when he got there, Elisha wouldn't even see him. Elisha sent his servant out. Do you know what Naaman received at that moment? Disappointment. And for a time, he chose to stay in his disappointment. So the, the, uh, the messenger came out and said, what you've got to do, Naaman, is go down to the river there and you've got to bathe in it seven times. Naaman looks around at that river and says, that's filthy. Like I was down in Melbourne and saw the Yarra River. I'm no way in the world am I bathing in that thing. It's like going to England and seeing the, the Thames, like there's no way in the world you'd bathe in that thing. Uh, years ago there was a king, I can't remember his name, but he decided to show how strong he was by jumping into the river. Killed him. Don't, you don't go doing stuff like that and Naaman's like, no way, I'm not, not going in that. Why? Because, you know, I've got plenty of better rivers than that river, I'm not going in that river. And so Naaman decided to stay within his disappointment and that's what he got. Disappointment. One of his officers came to him and said, Naaman, if, if Elisha told you to do something great, you know, like climb a mountain or slay a, a lion or do something like that, you would just do it in a heartbeat. Why is it so hard to go and, and wash yourself seven times down there in the river? And right there is the doors open in front of Naaman where his disappointment is keeping him here, but faith is stepping him out into the river. And at that moment, he decides to leave his disappointment behind and walk towards the river. Once he washes, nothing happens. Twice he washes, nothing happens. Three times he washes, and you can kind of hear disappointment drawing him back to that place. Four times he washes. It wasn't until he washed the seventh time before Naaman walks out and he's healed and his disappointment is now forgotten. Isn't that powerful of the kingdom? Disappointment can be so strong around us that it prevents us from stepping out and reaching for what the Lord has gifted us to. But all it takes is a step of faith and maybe you need somebody like Naaman's officer beside him to say, Ida, is it too hard to go and wash down in the Parramatta River? Is it too hard, Amanda, to go and do the things of the kingdom? And what, what they're doing is saying, we'll come with you, Naaman. We'll walk this with you, Amanda. We'll walk with this with you, Ida. And before you know it, things of the kingdom start happening because God places people around you to lead you to where you need to be. You can stay in your disappointment and you stay away from what God has gifted you to. The more that I deal with churches all over the place, the more that I see that there are some Christians that are just going, if God's given me that, that's what I'm having. And there's plenty of other Christians who go, I'm not sure I'm worthy for that. And I'm not sure I can ask for that. 
And surely God might have given that to somebody else, but he would not have given that to me, right? What's happening? They are staying in their place of unworthiness or they're staying in their place of disappointment and they are being prevented from stepping into their places of faith. When, the God, when God calls you home, not to just to heaven after you die, but he's calling you into his house today. He's calling you in the freedom to go wherever you want, to partake of whatever God has given to you. And as the Apostle Paul says to you, he has gifted you every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Every single one. And here in this passage, we have a few where he says, God is going to build a home. He's going to speak his words. He's going to give you his spirit. The spirit's going to lead you and guide you. And finally, peace of heart and mind is what he's going to give to you. These are gifts. Can you just use your imagination just for one little moment and think what would it look like to find God giving you a gift with your name on it? Would you just go and put it on the shelf, unopened? If God himself, the Father himself, walked into this room and said, Miriam, I've got this gift for you, what would you do with it? Would you wait to unwrap it later just in case you were disappointed with what it holds? You know when someone gives you something and you can smell aftershave in it and you don't use aftershave? And you've got to go, oh, that's awesome. That's the best aftershave ever. It's probably true because you don't know what the worst is, but is it a gift when God gives it? Would you just leave it or would you unwrap it? The Apostle Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul, and Jesus met him on the road and said, you can stay in your place of disobedience if you want, Saul, but I have a better option. And he gave Saul a gift. It's called forgiveness, grace, mercy. He could choose to ignore it. He could choose to receive it. He could choose to walk into it. He could choose just to keep on doing what he's always done. If he chose to do doing what he's always done, we would probably never heard of Saul. We definitely would never heard of Paul. But there was Saul, and he comes away from that place of bondage by stepping out in faith to a place of restoration. Right there. Restoration happens, and this is my experience as well, when faith happens. Restoration is a byproduct of faith. My belief is that when you believe, your world gets bigger. When you trust in God, your world gets bigger. It cannot get smaller because God is speaking and showing and declaring greater things to you. So as you believe, restoration is a byproduct of it. And so the concept to say, if you want to be restored uh, in this place this morning, God is calling you to steps of faith that kind of look like leaving the disappointment behind. I spoke to a brilliant person the other day who's gone through a very hard time. Uh, th- th- their father died of, of cancer and, and uh, she, before he died, she believed so strongly for his, his healing and his deliverance. She feels so strongly for it. She would declare it. She would speak it out. She would do all that she could. But at the end of the day, the father passed away and I spoke to her and I said, how are you going with that? And she goes, I prefer not to think about it. That's called how we try to deal with an issue that's inside of our lives. But I said to her, the disappointment that you feel right now can become a bondage unless you walk and understand why you've actually had to walk through it. Then you'll become somebody who has authority over disappointment and you'll be speaking to others who have gone through disappointment and saying, I want to show you what God did. I want to show you what God spoke. I want to show you what God led me through. And before you know it, you'll be leading others out of (coughs) disappointment. One of the things when I'm sitting around a Christmas tree with lots of presents under it is joy is present at that time. It's a present too, I guess, but it's it's there. It's very much there. There's an expectancy, there's a hope, there's all these things as you look at what is about to be unraveled. 2018 for you is a year of of looking at what is about to be unraveled. And it's all there. You've ever been to Westfield and you see those fake presents and you just know there's nothing in them? (laughs) This is not the same with the kingdom of God. I heard somebody say the other day, if I won lotto, it would change my life. 
That is true. The chances of winning lotto, I don't know what the, right, the odds are, but it's multi-million to one, is that right, or something like that? Do you know what the odds are of God encountering you? Uh, do you know what they are? One to one. You, you, it's, it's, it's a sure bet, if I can even use that in lightheartedness. God desires to meet you, and if you search for him, you'll find him. And if you find him, he's not wanting to leave you in your bondage or in your, anything away from places of restoration. The thing with the kingdom of God is if you want to step into those places, the things of the kingdom are going to start changing you and developing you. The things of the kingdom are going to start changing the character that is within you. And the things of the kingdom are going to be seen. And so when we have somebody like Kirsty who comes to the front and she's put on the spot, and I know how much she hates being put on the spot and all that sort of stuff, before you know it, the things of the kingdom start flowing out from her. The tears start flowing from her eyes. Why? Because God has done something within her that cannot be undone. Why? Because she has discovered a gift underneath a supposed Christmas tree that God has placed here and she's unraveled it and she keeps on unraveling it and she keeps looking for the gifts with her name on it. Why I keep asking Honor to come up and speak like she's done or Rochelle to come up and speak about what God has spoken into her heart. Why? Because I know they have hearts to keep finding what God has placed before them and they are ones who will step out and engage and take hold of everything God has done. And so if I had Honor up here today and I said, Honor, go and bathe in the, in the Parramatta River seven times, she's gone, no problem at all. That's what I will do. Why? Because she is a young woman of faith. It reminds me of another story in Two Kings where, and I think I might have spoken about this a couple of years ago, where, where the king and Elijah, Elisha was dying, or Eli, yeah, Elisha was dying and a king came to him and said, give me one more word, Elisha. And he says, I will give you another word. And he's looking now for faith. And he says, I want you to shoot an arrow outside of that window. And the king takes a bow and he shoots an arrow out there. And he says to the king, you will have victory over Aram. Then he says, now I want you to take the rest of the arrows and I want you to bash them on the ground. And seems lightheartedly, the king's like, what? Why would I do that? And he bangs them on the ground three times and Elisha says, here's the last word I'm going to give to you. If you had to bash those things five or six or seven times, it said you would have never had defeat in your life. But because you've only bashed them three times, there are three victories ahead of you. When the Lord calls you to do something, step into that place of faith. Believe that God is about to do something immeasurably more than what you can now imagine. When Naaman got out of that river for the seventh time and saw his skin was healed, he went back to doing what he did. Do you know what he did? He was an enemy to Israel. Isn't that the most extraordinary thing that God would do? But his story has never been forgotten. Naaman probably didn't think twice about it after that. thinks, fantastic, let's just get on with my life and my world. But the children of Israel did not forget that. And over 3,000 years later, we are sitting here today listening to a man who stepped out in faith, stepped away from his disappointment. If that is the challenge for you this morning, then I want to lay it in front of you. If you have disappointment that's holding you back from what God is calling you to do, this morning is a moment to just open your heart and say, Father, today I will step into those places of faith. I want to know what it is to be at home with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to sense and understand your spirit. I want to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And I want to know what it is to have peace of heart and mind. These are what we call gifts. And our Father is a good Father and gives to us good gifts. They are available to us. And if your disappointment stops you from reaching out, then understand that's where you stay. But your faith will have you stepping out. Your faith will have other people been around you right now to move you to where God is calling you to do. So as we've done the last few weeks, I'm going to ask a few of our, our people to come forward. And Rochelle and Naomi and Trish Kant, she's on the desk today, maybe Ida, um, and just to come and stand at the front of the church. And, and if today is a day where you've gone, I'm leaving disappointment behind me, then I want you to come and stand beside the one that you feel called to stand beside. Can we do that? Maybe Trev can come down too and 
I don't know, like it depends if you guys want to or not, but just, I just believe today that today is going to be a shift in many people's lives where disappointment is recognised and understood for what it is. You've gone through a very difficult time or you're going through a difficult time, but your disappointment is not where the Lord wants you to stay. He wants you to be restored. That is his plan, that is his design for you, and this morning he's calling you. So we're going to get the guys up here to come and... Lisa can pick the song that she wants to do and I'm just going to pray. And in this last song, if you want to come forward and just say, yep, I'm stepping out in faith, let that be you this morning. So Holy Father, I just want to say thank you for the work of the Spirit of God inside of this room. And I sense, Lord, that I just know that there's a lot of humidity in this room and and there's a lot of, uh, I guess, sweat. I'm not sure that's the right thing to pray right now, but just want to pray, Father, that that will be uh, just ignored for a moment as we just push into the power of the Holy Spirit. And for, Father, the things that you're doing and, and moving in people's lives and hearts right now, I pray that you'll give them courage to make steps of faith, whether that be to the front of the church or standing right where they are. You don't need to come to the front of the church to make a step of faith. You might know exactly what the Lord's calling you to do. But today I just want to encourage you that if that's something you'd like to do, to come and present yourself and allow the people of God to stand beside you and pray for you, seek vision for you, speak words of comfort, words of challenge. Maybe be bold enough to ask them for a word of challenge and not just affirmation. And so, Father, I pray that this morning, allow your spirit to be free in this room to do everything now that you've caused it to do today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in a song like that, angels of heaven, you can just hear them singing with us. That we believe and we trust and know that for each step of faith that has been made in this room this morning, your world is getting bigger. Can you believe that? For everyone who makes a step of faith, Not everyone, but many times people think, I want my step of faith to make me feel better. I just want to encourage you that the path of restoration is often one that leads you through difficult times, but it leads you to purpose and life. So don't just hope to feel better. Hope to know that God has made you better restored you, is growing you, is renewing you. And so, Lord, I want to pray for each person who's come forward. I have this real sense in my own vision of seeing uh, like a whole field that's just been sown with sunflower seeds. So much hope in such a small seed but it becomes such a strong and such a, a glorious plant. And so for each of those who have come forward, Lord, I thank you for the one that has come beside them and I thank you for the words that you've spoken in through them. I pray, Father, for things that are sown today that we will know that what we sow is what we reap. So if we sow hope, we will reap the hope. If we sow love, we will reap love. If we sow in forgiveness, forgiveness will kind of look like a whole bunch like grace. And so, Lord, today I pray that your hands will be upon each one, calling us further forward in the kingdom to receive what you have already placed in front of us. Father, now give us the courage to unwrap the gift. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to come on downstairs, have a cup of coffee if it's not too hot for you. There's watermelon down there, there's water. Come down and enjoy.